Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 17, verses 16, all the way through to the end of the chapter, verse 34. We're talking about the church in Athens, the believers in Athens. And th this is a very interesting portion of scripture because we got Paul who runs across a bunch of people who's got an inscription that says, to the unknown God. Like they know there's a God, but they don't really know God. And you know, there's a lot of people today even in churches, that they know there's a God, but they don't really know God. So we're going to get into this, and it is going to be awesome. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw the city full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue, again, in the synagogue, always going to the synagogue, with the Jews and the devout persons, and in the marketplace every day with those who met him. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also were conversing with him. Some said, what does this babbler want to say? Others said, he seems to be advocating foreign deities because he preaches Jesus and the resurrection. They took hold of him and brought him to the Areopagus saying, May we know what this new teaching is, which you are speaking about? For you bring certain strange things to our ears. We want to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the strangers living there spent their time in nothing else, but either to tell or to hear something new. Paul stood in the middle of the Areopagus and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that you are very religious in all things. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I also found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship in ignorance, I announce to you. The God who made the world and all things in it, He, being Lord of heaven and earth, doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. He isn't served by men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he himself gives to all life and breath and all things. He made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the surface of the earth, having determined appointed seasons and the boundaries of their dwellings that they should seek the Lord, if perhaps they might reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live, move, and have our being, as some of our own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Being then offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone engraved by art and design of man. The times of ignorance, therefore, God overlooked. But now he commands that all people everywhere should repent because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained, of which he has given assurance to all men in that he has raised him from the dead. Notice here that Paul said that God commands, present tense, God commands all men everywhere to repent. You know, I've spoken to a pastor not long ago that told me, well, you know, you don't have to repent to get saved because repenting is a work. And you know, it says it's not by works. It's, it's, it's by faith that we're saved. He's quoting Paul to say that you're not, you don't have to repent to get saved. All you got to do is just believe, just have faith. He's quoting Paul here to say you're not supposed to repent. Doesn't he know that very same Paul said here, preached here in Athens, that God commands all men everywhere to repent. If you don't preach the message of repentance, you are misleading the people. Any so-called prophet that doesn't preach repentance of sin is a false prophet. Doesn't matter who it is, from Genesis to Revelation and beyond, throughout all eternity, 
the message of God is to repent. Now, when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, but others said, we want to hear you again concerning this. Thus, Paul went out from among them, but certain men joined with him and believed, among whom also was Dionysius, the Arapagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. You can take at least two things away from this scripture. Number one, you can know God. There's no excuse to, to say, I believe in God, but who knows him? I mean, he's, he's an unknown God. You can know him. And number two, Paul reiterates, Paul confirms the message of old that you must repent. Seek God with all your heart and you will find him. You know, part of seeking God is turning from your sins, is turning from your sins, doing everything within your power to stop sinning and calling on God to help you with the rest. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.